What's going on everybody? My name's Chris. Welcome to my channel. This is part 15 of my acoustic guitar build. First guitar I've ever built and I'm building it from scratch. I went ahead and made a template for the bridge. I just cut the plans out, the bridge that's on the plans. I cut it out and put it on this uh, piece of plywood here and I drilled some holes for the bridge pins. I gotta go about making this. So this is one of the last woodworking things that I'll actually do on this guitar. As I'm approaching the end, I'm already thinking about uh, the next guitar and what I'm gonna do for that. So I've already started to customize my own shape. I'm not doing that just to do it, but there's things about the OM I don't like too much. I'll get into that whenever I make the next guitar, all right? So I've already got kind of a, a template for that. But anyway, back to the current guitar build. Got a few things I gotta do to make this bridge. So let me go ahead and do them. Here's the bridge, it's a piece of ebony. West African ebony to be specific, and it's too thick. So I need to go ahead and plane a little bit off of it. So smooth. Okay, the thickness is good. Now I just need to square off one of these edges. So this is the first time I've ever used this. I just got it. I went ahead and used this square and I got it square with the uh, plate and then I got the little miter gauge square. So I'm just going to bump this on there real quick. This thing takes forever to spin down too. Look at it. But that's perfect. Here's my template. I'm just going to tape it on here. Try to stay as even with this square edge as possible. Alright, let's go to the bandsaw. Before I took the template off, I marked the holes for the bridge pins to drill those out. And I took a white art pencil and drew around the template. So hopefully that line doesn't disappear as I'm trying to shape this thing, but anyway, I'm gonna try to shape down to the line and then drill those holes out. Here goes nothing. I hope I don't screw this up. I really hope. Ah, plug it in. All right, before I go too far, I'm just realizing that I forgot to do the uh, radius on the back of the bridge. So. What I'm going to have to do is lay some sandpaper right here and then work on that for a little while. Hopefully I won't take too much thickness off of it. But before I did that, I do have something I need to mention. I went ahead and put my bridge about where it's going to go and I got my straight edge out to check. You know, I need to see if I really needed to thickness the bridge at all and just see what I'm at. Because I watched a little bit more of the course and he talks about the distance between the bridge and your straight edge needing to be pretty close, all right? Like, pretty close. So I had to stop here because I thought maybe I had messed up and I needed to start over with the bridge. Let me show you what I'm looking at. I don't know if you can see that or not, but this is about where the bridge is gonna go. If I slide my straight edge, you can see that it does clear the bridge, which is good, but I think that the gap there may be too much. <laughs> so I've got like, it's in between one and a half and two millimeters. I think it's supposed to be like almost touching the bridge or like right up on top of it. I thought I screwed up. I was thinking, and I still have to radius it on the back. So I was thinking I may lose a little bit of thickness for that. And I'm going to be way out. So I don't know what kind of, kind of issue that would cause if I did continue on. 
I mean, I know my saddle will be sticking up a little bit. So anyway, I was real bummed out. I made a story on Instagram to talk about it. So then what I did was I went upstairs and got my Martin out. And I just checked what it was set at. So I didn't. I put a little straight edge on the fretboard and ran it out to the bridge. And I swear, the guitar that I have upstairs, the Martin, is at least this much, if not more, higher than the bridge. So I think what I'm going to do is, I think I'm going to go ahead and just move on, move forward as if it's okay, and just continue making the bridge, and then uh, maybe do some more research in between, all right? So just wanted to let you know, I did run into something and I'm kind of questioning a lot about it so but I do have to say I'll step back here and look at it it looks thinking awesome with the bridge on it so I'm really excited to see that so far it's just a really cool feeling to see that kind of what it's going to look like once it's there so anyway after all that I'm just going to go ahead and move on to the next step make sure that's not wet <laughs> um I will say that the guitar I mentioned, the Martin that I have, I know that guitar, it's not been set up, you know, since I bought it, so it's not been set up. So it's probably out of whack a little bit, but it plays fine. The string height or the action doesn't seem too high on it. It doesn't hurt my fingers. It stays in tune, it tunes fine. So if that one's okay, and it's got that height above the bridge, so maybe this one, at least for my first guitar, is satisfactory enough for me, all right? And I'm gonna just work on that for the next guitar. I may try some different things. I'm gonna go ahead and start with this rougher sandpaper. You know, I wonder if I could have taken my uh, card scraper or something and kind of scoot that out a little bit first. I saw um, a series on YouTube recently uh, recording Johnny Kincaid from Kincaid Guitars making a guitar. And he used a scraper on the middle. I didn't see what he did after that, but I'm assuming he was trying to get that radius in there. And just by the way, I did buy his book. He has a book on how to make guitars. He's made 500 something guitars. So I figured just to expand my knowledge and uh, learn a little bit more about guitar making, I got his book just to get another viewpoint on how to make guitars. Maybe he's got different things that he does. It's just trying to broaden my knowledge. Look at that. And I didn't want to get any ebony dust on it. Look at this. I've already got ebony. I'm already getting ebony dust on it. I'm going to sand this whole thing down again anyway. So. I'm just going to keep doing what, I, what you just saw me doing. And then I'll catch back up with you in a little bit. I'm going to do some more shaping on this thing now that, now that I've got the radius on the back. that long good great I just got to reestablish that wing after doing some of that shaping so here we go good grief how many times I'm gonna remember to it's been another week and I went ahead and stopped what I was doing I just decided I'm not happy tapering the bottom of the bridge took off another half a millimeter off the height of the bridge so that increased the distance between the straight edge and the bridge. Now I do have to level the fret still, so that may come off a little bit on that distance, but I don't know how much. Plus, when I was trying to sand on this guitar here, and I had the sandpaper taped, I guess when I was sanding, you know, I was able to rock back and forth like this. I must have been pushing down like this and just wasn't going, I must not have been going straight. They're right in the middle. Let me show you the problem that I'm just not happy with. So this is where the bridge is going to go. And if I push down right in the center, now it is tapered. I can put a straight edge across this and there's light underneath the whole center of it. If I push down in the center, you can see a, there's still a gap between this wing and the surface of the soundboard. I got the same thing on the other side. So I can probably push and if I wanted to, maybe when I'm gluing the bridge down clamp that down but i really don't feel like that's right i just feel like this is going to want to pull up on the soundboard and could possibly come loose later or cause bulging issues so <laughs> i had to make a decision and i figured out how to fix it let me show you what i'm going to do is this 
All right. <laughs> I went ahead and purchased another blank, a bridge blank to start over. Uh, I just want, this is nine and a half millimeters thick. And to have to sand down more to make this wing touch, I would just be way too thin, I think, and create too much gap between the straight edge and the bridge. So I ordered a new one. Now this one I got from Stu Mac just because the shipping was free and it was only like $13. I would have had to pay shipping at LMI unless I had spent 50 bucks. So I've got the free shipping on Stu Mac. So I went ahead and got one from them. This one came thicker than the one from LMI. This one's this one's more like uh, probably 12 or 13 millimeters thick. The one from uh, LMI was like just shy of 11 millimeters. So I'm starting over. So everything you saw me do to this bridge I'm going to do all over again to this one, except I'm not going to thin it out so much. What I did was, I went to luthiersuppliers.com, and I had to Google this. I didn't find this right away, but I looked for like a, uh, like a radius dish that's opposite of the concave dish for the, like the top and back. Like a, I guess I needed a convex dish. I wanted to see if somebody made that because I saw Robbie use one on, in his videos. So I need like this shape, just on a separate dish, 30 foot radius. So I can take this block off of the guitar and put the radius in it in a, in a separate dish. So I ordered a domed radius dish is what it's called. I'll put a link to the one I got. Only thing is, it's been like four or five days. I haven't heard back from them. So I paid the money. I haven't, they said they would send me an email when they would ship. And I haven't got that email yet as of the time of this recording. I'm a little nervous. Uh, I, you know, I don't know who runs the website. It could be just one dude in his garage. I don't know. So maybe he's got to make this stuff. But... Um, I'm waiting to get that in so that I can do some sanding on the bottom of this without having to worry about keeping sandpaper. The problem I had was the sandpaper wasn't exactly flat, so there, it was wavy. So when I was doing this, say for example, the sandpaper was bowed up right here, it's rubbing on the wing. So I think some of that might have messed my bridge up as well. I'm waiting on that dish to come in. I'm going to give it a few more days before I contact them. I may contact them next Monday or Tuesday. Today's Saturday, so I'll contact them in two or three days and just kind of check up on my order. This is a long talking segment, right? So that's what I'm going to do. Everything you saw me do, I'm going to do over again on this blank. Yeah, just a side note, check it out. I ordered this thing. At the same time I ordered that dome radius dish, and it's a clamp for a bridge. I got this from LMI. I've seen these before. If you uh, follow Gabby on her YouTube channel. I think that's her name. <laughs> I think I've seen her use something like this, but what I like about this one is that I'll be able to clamp it and there's nothing in the way. I can clean it up, glue squeeze out. So I'm planning on using this. I've already got some feedback from some people on Instagram. Thank you. They told me that glue could get on these uh, screws and it'll make them difficult to get out. So I'm going to put some paste wax on those screws before I uh, install them, I guess. But anyway, just wanted to show you. Pretty cool. I had to stop right here and make a note about something. So you can see where I'm at. A couple of things here. I just had to point this out, but because just in case you ever get to this and you're doing this kind of thing, here's my thinking. I've got a flatter piece of sandpaper, notice. It's bigger and it lays flat. The last piece was a piece I had cut and it had a bend in it. So it was bending up right here. And as I was sanding, it would be kind of touching the bottom of this wing. And also when I was sanding on the last bridge, I was grabbing right here and just going up and down. I'm calling this the contact patch. It's just the term we have at work for tires, so it makes sense. You can see where the sawdust is coming off the bridge. When I started today, I tried to make sure that I was holding right in the center and trying to keep it level. I didn't want to see any sawdust out here on the edges yet, because on the last one I was doing that, and I think all I was doing was sanding down the edges and making it flare up, which is another reason why it wasn't touching the surface. So. You can see where I'm at. So the plan here is to keep doing this and just watch this contact patch grow bigger and bigger towards the end. I'll know that whenever I'm sanding and it finally makes its way all the, all the way to the end, I'm probably pretty flat against the uh, surface of the guitar. So let me vacuum up the sawdust and then I'll start again and show you what it looks like. So watch this. I'm trying to really stay in the area about where it's going to go. And I'm going to hold it in the middle like this. All right, already you can see it's just right in the middle right there where the sawdust is coming off. So that means it's hitting this part of the bridge. After doing that for a little while, what I'm doing is flipping it over just to make sure it's, it's, it's even. And I'm not putting like some kind of slope into it. 
So you can see about how much of the back it's touching. So I'm getting down to where I'm getting towards the wings and this still feels smooth. As long as this rough area makes it all the way to the edge, it should be good. So I'm gonna keep on doing this and when I get done, I'll catch up with you. I took a little break because my hands were getting tired but I'm back at it and uh, I just vacuumed off the sand dust. The sand, why do I keep calling it the sand dust? The sawdust. Now watch, it's been a while of doing this so Remember what the contact patch looked like before it was coming about out to here. So let me start on this and see what it looks like. You can already tell it's become the complete width of the bridge. That tells me that I'm at least touching the outsides now. And it started, it's pretty even, see? And so far I've sanded off probably 0 0.6, 0 0.7 millimeters to get to this point. So... Anyway, I just wanted to do an update. You can see what I mean by the contact patch growing towards the edges. It tells me that I've been sanding more evenly than the last one. Okay, it's been another week and here's the old bridge. Here's the new bridge. So I'm back to where I stopped with the old bridge. And I've ended up just about a millimeter, a little bit more than a millimeter thicker with the new bridge than I was at the old bridge, which um, the straight edge is coming off the bridge uh, probably just over a millimeter now. Um, it was over two millimeters before, so I feel much better about where it's at. That comes out to about, you know, around somewhere around a 32nd of an inch or so. So it's much better. I've got to start sanding the guitar and uh, getting towards the end, right? Let me take care of this last couple of things and then we'll catch back up. Okay, I'm gonna mess this up. Great. I've done everything I can on the bridge until now. The next part is to route the saddle slot and then do some sanding and just basically ready to go for whenever I go to attach it. So I spent the time to make this jig instead of buying a commercial one. The bridge will go in here and of course I'll have to tape that down or attach it to the table so it don't move. Attach this to the table so it don't move. Still got to get a couple of bolts. I'm going to Home Depot later to do that. And then I can attach this and kind of adjust it how it needs to be. You know this is, you can move it like this. And then I'll take my Stumac Dremel base that fits right in there and then I'll be able to do the routing so <laughs> I hope that works I really hope it does but while I'm waiting to go to the store to get these bolts which I'm gonna be doing later today I'm gonna go ahead and start sanding the guitar and that's not something I'm really excited about doing because I hate sanding <laughs> anything I've ever made I hate the sanding and finishing process but it's a necessary step for the guitar and I need to make sure I do a really good job. So uh, what I've done already is I've inspected the binding on both sides to make sure there's no gaps. All right, there was a small tiny gap right here, which I mentioned when I actually scraped the binding the first time, that's the one I noticed. And then I noticed a few back here on the back, which I had not noticed before, but it was right around the waist area. So I went ahead and filled those gaps like Robbie said to do in the course. And now I'm ready to go ahead and do the normal sanding. So <laughs> it's going to take quite some time. But it's exciting because I'm going to be doing the finishing next. And I'm right at the end. So feeling good. So I'm going to go through all this. And then uh, before we move on to the next part, I'm going to catch back up with you. You gotta check this out, all right? <laughs> Here's the uh, saddle routing jig. 
I got back from Home Depot a little while with some bolts, wing nuts, and I had to uh, inset the head of the bolt into the bottom of the jig. So I'm all set up and ready to go. What I did was I took two clamps to secure the jig on the front. Plus I've got double stick tape on the bottom of it. I've got the bridge in here double stick taped to the table. And uh, I guess the MDF is bowed because the back was coming off. So I took a piece of 2x4 along the back with a couple of clamps holding it flat so that the Dremel wasn't cutting at an angle. And uh, then I found two pieces of uh, wood, just some little scrap bins I have here. That are the exact that are the exact width to place there to act as stops for the Dremel. So the plan is I'm going to do this in several cuts until I get about to the depth that I'm aiming to go. I'm really nervous. My plan is to just turn it on, plunge it down, push it across, turn it off, and then keep advancing the bed until I'm where I need to be. I hope nothing goes wrong. I really do, because I really don't want to make a, have to make another bridge. <laughs> this is my second one, and I really don't want to have to make another one. So let's do this. I'll try to do it where you can see and I'm not blocking the camera. All right, this is the best shot I can get for you right now. I was going to try to look at the bit, but I kind of got to stand on this side and do this. So I just plugged in the Dremel, verified that it's working, and uh, <laughs> I'm going to go ahead on with my first... First pass. No point in waiting. Putting it off any farther. Well, it's there. So I'm about a millimeter down right here in the middle. So I just got to do another uh, few passes. It looks like everything went about as smooth as it could go. I'm a little bit lower than my line here. So it may be a little bit farther this way than I initially wanted to be, but that's okay, I guess. I ain't gonna change it now. <laughs> so a few more passes and I'll catch back up with you. Well, it's the next day and I've got to get back to sanding. I took a break from sanding the guitar to finish the bridge. So all that's left on the guitar is the top. And i got to do the bridge. So I'm going to go ahead and knock that out. Shouldn't take too long on the bridge. That's pretty cool. The bridge is so super smooth. I sanded it up to like 400. So it's going to go, you know, <laughs> well, I sanded off the position where it goes, so I'll have to refigure that. But it's going to look pretty good. You know, there's like a little anomaly in the wood here that I don't think there's anything I could do about. It just looks like a little spot where the grain just tweaks a little bit. And there's a little black spot right here. I'm not sure what that is, but I can't tell if that's something that just appeared and that was in the wood when I sanded. I don't know. I'm gonna try to get it out before I finish, but if it doesn't come out, it is what it is at this point. <laughs> but anyway, let's back up a little bit. It's starting to look pretty awesome with the bridge on there. Looks pretty cool. So anyway, that's gonna be all for this video. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't. I felt like this was a good stopping point because I'll be getting into finishing. It's gonna take me at least a couple of weeks to finish. Um, I'm gonna to try to do a coat in the morning and a coat at night until I get through all the coats. Um, I'm guessing 15 to 18 coats. It's almost kind of like a, almost like a French polish method, but using true oil instead. Anyway, you see what the back looks like. <laughs> Kids are going crazy, as always. Thanks so much for watching. 
I appreciate you watching all the way through all these parts. What is this? Number 16 in the series? <laughs> uh, maybe 17 will be the last one. I'm hoping so, but uh, you know, I gotta, can only do so much whenever I have time. So thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.